In the latest episodes of the series Chernobyl Russian scientists reveal the truth on the cause of the explosion of the reactor of the fourth power unit in the reality of the disaster at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Indeed, revealed fundamental flaws in the RBMK-1000 reactor. Despite this, today 10 RBMK-type reactors are still in operation in Russia. They are not going to be replaced by VDR-1000 reactors, the nuclear engineers have come up with something else. Russia has started building a new type of nuclear reactor that will be used at nuclear power plants across the country. At the site of the Siberian Chemical Combine, owned by the Rosatom Corporation, construction of power units called Brest 300 has begun. In addition to the reactor, a plant is being built there to produce not only uranium, plutonium and its nuclear fuel for the reactor, but also a plant to reprocess the spent fuel. The Brest reactor is still only a prototype. Its approximate cost is 100 billion rubles. The city of Seversk, where construction of the new reactor has begun, is known to many for the accident that occurred there in 1993 at the Siberian Chemical Combine Plant. The explosion destroyed one of the uranium and plutonium extraction apparatuses. The explosion released a significant portion of plutonium and other radioactive substances into the atmosphere. The industrial site as well as the area in the northeastern direction were subjected to radioactive contamination. Also, almost 2,000 people were exposed to radioactive radiation after the accident. So this accident is very well remembered in those places. But this new kind of reactor being built there is supposedly supposed to be the safest reactor on the planet. Is that true and why did they really need to build a $100 billion reactor? Let's find out in this video. Since ancient times, man has used the heat of fire to heat his dwellings and burned wood and coal to keep warm. The new century, the age of oil, has changed little in terms of heat generation technology. Still, like millions of generations before him, modern man gets most of his energy from fossil fuels. Mankind pulls out and earths the natural substance that is stored energy. And then extracts it. It's usually firewood, coal, oil, and gas, and people just burn it. Of course, that's stupid. And so after World War II, with the beginning of the atomic bomb era, scientists in various countries began to harness the power of atoms for energy. Nuclear power is a reactor. A reactor produces heat. We use this heat to boil water in pans called steam generators. And then we use that steam to generate electricity. But throughout the history of the peaceful atom there have been accidents, and despite new technologies in nuclear power, there are still no international agreements that clearly define what exactly can be considered a safe nuclear power plant. A reactor accident carries many dangers. An explosion releases large amounts of heat energy, which is accompanied by the release of radiation. The water that was in the reactor decomposes into hydrogen and oxygen, turning into rattlesnake gas. The explosion of such gases can completely destroy a nuclear power unit, which threatens large-scale nuclear contamination of the environment for many hundreds of kilometers, as it happened in Chernobyl. Therefore, the operation of nuclear reactors is the most dangerous in the modern energy industry. Of course, modern nuclear power plants emit less radiation into the atmosphere than thermal emissions from thermal power plants, which contain radioactive isotopes that actually cause irreparable damage to the ecology. In general, there are several main types of nuclear reactors in use in Russia at the moment. Theirs are the most common in Russia and Eastern Europe. They operate only on enriched uranium. They use ordinary water as a moderator and coolant. The pressure of the coolant in PWRs is kept by a powerful reactor vessel. Electric generators at such a of are powered by steam that circulates in the second circuit. The radioactive water of the first circuit does not come in contact with the electric generators. Second nuclear power plants equipped with reactors of this type are very reliable, but they require enriched uranium for their operation. Of course, there are also RBMKs. They're also called Chernobyl-type reactors. They are located in St. Petersburg, Korsk, and Smolensk. Apart from the Soviet Union, no one else has built RBMK-1000-type reactors. They are very powerful and belong to the boiling-type reactors. Their neutron moderator is graphite, and water is the coolant. They are simpler than theirs. 
they can operate on less enriched uranium. But since they have no second coolant circuit and the turbine of the electric generator is driven by radioactive steam, radiation leaks are more likely at such reactors. In addition, as the Chernobyl disaster showed, reactors of this type make high demands on personnel training in compliance with safe operation rules. It has already been proven by practice that during operation it is strictly forbidden to conduct experiments on such reactors such as what will happen if the protection is switched off and the reactor is accelerated. Although with qualified maintenance such reactors operate reliably and for a long time. The advantage of RBMKs over VARES is the fact that a large amount of plutonium is produced during the operation of such reactors. There are also ball-filled reactors, which is quite a promising technology. It is a spherical reactor filled with spherical heat-emitting elements. Inert gas is blown through the reactor sphere. Fuel elements release heat, which is carried out to a heat exchanger outside the reactor vessel. The hot gas transfers its heat to the water, the steam spins the turbine and generates electricity. Fuel rods for reactors of this type consist of graphite with potassium oxide, metallic uranium plus. The pros of this technology is the safety of the reactor. Its acceleration and gas explosion are impossible. The disadvantage is that this is a new technology, it has not been debugged yet and it is not known how new type fuel rods will behave under conditions of long-term operation. They are just starting to be built. This technology has been developed only in Russia. The lawyer scan PP has BN600 and BN800 units. When operating on fast neutrons, no moderator is used in the reactor core. And heat generation is an order of magnitude higher than in thermal neutron reactors. Water as a coolant cannot cope with such a heat flow. Therefore, molten sodium is used as a coolant for such reactors. The main advantage of a fast neutron reactor is the fact that plutonium is reproduced from uranium-238 during operation. Fast neutrons cause uranium-238 to turn into uranium-239, which is not stable and, as a result of beta decay, turns into plutonium-239, the most valuable raw material of the nuclear industry. In some countries, new reactor designs have been proposed where the void reactivity coefficient is also present. For example, this principle is used in fast neutron decomposer reactors. Such reactors have been built, for example, in China, Russia, and Japan. So, why did we need to build a new type of breast reactor when there are already used up and relatively safe reactors? Let's start with the fact that, for example, a conventional nuclear reactor uses one of the natural isotopes of uranium-235. When a neutron hits a target, it causes a fission reaction of this fuel into a lighter fuel and some heavy elements, releasing a tremendous amount of energy. To understand the scale, how much more energy of nuclear decay than the usual energy obtained by burning, for example, fuel oil. The Russian scientific reactor bore 60 active zone of which has the volume of a small bookcase, releases as much heat as a whole line of Sormovo CHPP. That is, one bookcase can produce electricity for a hundred thousand people. There are hundreds of such power reactors using natural uranium as fuel in the world now. However, nuclear power still occupies a modest 10% of electric power generation. And if you count heat generation, its share drops to four. Roughly, coal provides almost half of the world's electricity. Why is that? The fact is that nuclear power, besides its undoubted advantages, has several disadvantages. The first problem is on everyone's lips. Decaying in the reactor uranium-235 produces dozens of different isotopes. A number of nuclear disasters and incidents, Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, Ural Trail, Seversky Trail, Fukushima show that the atom does not forgive frivolous attitude to itself. The second problem is that there is not as much uranium on planet Earth as there is coal, gas, or even oil. As of 2011, its reserves worldwide were estimated at 5 million tons. 1% of the stockpile is continuously decreasing, it is now just under 1 million tons. With an annual consumption of 75,000 tons, taking a calculator, it is easy to calculate that the world has about 13 years of economically viable uranium reserves left. Another equal amount of uranium is contained in deposits that are not profitable. That is, already by 2040, the price of electricity generated by NE in the world will at least double. 
and after 2045 there will be practically no uranium-235 left in the world. The third problem is nuclear waste. Hundreds of millions of tons of radioactive waste generated by nuclear power plants have accumulated in the world over 50 years of nuclear energy use. At current production levels, the amount of waste could double in the next few years. At the same time, none of the 34 countries with nuclear power knows the solution to the waste problem today. The fact is that most of the waste retains its radioactivity up to 240,000 years and must be isolated from the biosphere for this time. Today waste is kept in temporary storage facilities or buried not deep underground. In many places, waste is handled in an unaddressed manner. Waste is dumped on the ground, into lakes and oceans. These problems are so serious that every year fewer and fewer countries can afford to maintain a full cycle of nuclear power. For example, a couple of years ago the UK phased out the production of reactors and their fuel. The US has been going through a real permanent algae crisis for decades. And in Japan, after Fukushima, they shut down their fleet of nuclear reactors. And only the European Union and Russia continue to develop their nuclear power program.